Hi, I'm Christian. And I'm Vera. And in this episode, we're going to walk you through the buying process of a Land Rover Discovery 4. Hope you enjoy the video. Early in the morning? Yeah, it's, it's really early. Oh my God, the poor mall crawler. The mall crawler is changing owner. The new owner wants to go to Morocco. So that vehicle will actually see some dirt. So the mall crawler is getting a TÜV inspection here quickly during lunch. Not a big deal on this car. Done. Mall crawler got TÜV. This is my last drive in my Discovery 4. I'm selling it and I'm driving it now over to the new owner. So this is a 100% good buy, I'm convinced. As long as you put 5W40 in it. Are we there yet? <laughs> Almost. So we are on our way to look at another mall crawler. Because Christian sold his. So this is the car we came for. Three hour drive. We're gonna do first an outside inspection. All not nice. Thing is bent. So I got ignition on, and the first thing we're gonna do is check what kind of faults this car has before we even start it. So it got all sorts of faults. Let's check the engine first. That's nothing bad, just invalid data received from some other module. It's all U faults. U faults are not terrible. Mm -hmm. Windshield. Missing sensor. Uh-huh. That's bad. Secondary battery component failure. HVAC. Nothing bad. So the only fault it displays is windshield missing sensor. So something here was maybe the light detection or the rain sensor or something like that. I don't know. And then secondary battery it complains about. What we're gonna do now is start the vehicle and check how long it takes to get oil pressure. just about three seconds I would say oh it's moving the air suspension is alive and I don't suspect it was a smoker car it smells quite okay make sure the seats are not damaged yeah it's a different leather than what we had in yeah, the mall crawler it also got this big sound system installed and it has spider webs the interior it's okay yeah but it's quite dirty it has quite some body damage. Right? Yeah, you know? there's body damage here yeah. and over there. The he did not write this into his hand. Yeah. Camera is not working. And I said, well, how are we going to test drive it? It's out of gas. Diesel, I'm sorry. And he gives me 20 bucks and say, fill it up. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to take a quick movie here around the car. Rim damage, this rim damage. The camera not working. This is hanging down and here it had a hit. There's a hit. Here's a hit. This rim is okay, no damage here. And I got 20 bucks to get gas. I got the outside, so we have no dispute later on. Oh, you have to go right anyway. This is the first test drive I'm ever doing where I have to get gas for the vehicle I'm test driving. And it has a shuddering when you decelerate, he said, from 80 kilometers per hour down. They had the suspension bushings changed in order to solve it and it didn't solve it and now according the guy, to Land Rover yeah, and now the Maybe. guy is kind of uh, desperate yeah um, I think there is some room to negotiate because yeah. of that damage and because of the hit it had in the rear um, it does leak oil below um, yeah and not a little bit so it's losing transmission oil or something it actually was at Land Rover for that problem and it was supposedly cured yeah. So we're gonna look at that. Still have the 20 bucks? No, I do cut the 20 bucks. This was the first Land Rover this used car dealership ever took in. And they completely regret it because of the service and the interaction they had with Land Rover when they reached out for help. Scratches. It has weird stuff. Mine doesn't have that. So let's get in, we drive it. 
Christian loves it. Yeah, I love it. Oh yeah, see? The steering wheel is no longer straight. Yeah, I go to command shift. We can take two cars home which are going into limp mode. I don't think we can take this car off-road in any way. No, this is a mall crawler. It never left the road. Never, ever. The wheel alignment isn't done right. Maybe they did it our way. Yeah, we better do that our way. <laughs> Whatever we detect on these kind of issues, we can hopefully use them in our negotiation. He's asking for 29.9. That's quite a bit overpriced. Yeah. Oh, it is a transmission. Shit, I don't like that. It's not shifting right. It's not the suspension pushing. It it bumps the transmission. Oh, there's a McDonald's. Okay, what about this distance thing? What about the eco? Cruise control works. The problem is from third gear in second gear. Here, when oh, I'm a challenger. Third... Here's oh. the third gear. Now watch it when I shift to second. Ah, oh, that's no good. Ah. So it shouldn't do that. So there is something with the control unit of the HP8. So the mechatronic unit, which yeah. we had just out on, on your Achim's. Car. <laughs> and we almost, we all, <laughs> but the oh worst, God. I never had such a bad shower. Okay, <laughs> this distance assist is not working. Yeah, so that's a sensor or what is that? It might be that the sensor is missing. It might be that the wiring is messed up because they replaced the windshield. The windshield does look kind of new. And the eco mode is not working. Yeah. So does that car have 20 inch wheels yes, on? Yes, it has unfortunately oh, 20 inch wheels. The ride is inside. really bumpy, really hard, you know. 20. Why do you put 20 inch wheels on a Discovery? It's a mall crawler. This oh is not a God. Discovery yet, okay? Why don't you get a it's Porsche? A mall, whoever bought this new wanted a mall crawler. And that's what it is. This is a 2015. They still have that offset. What was Land Rover thinking? Thinking is not the strength of Land Rover, okay? It has a fridge part. That's cool. <laughs> I'm gonna let it on until we are at the dealership again. See, it got the electric steering wheel. Oh, I don't know why that's so important to you. I... It will actually fold out of the way when I open the door. Oh! I have to think about getting older. My heated seat works. Does Mine too. Work? Yeah. Okay. So air conditioning works Let me too. see if the fridge works. That's most important. Yeah, it's oh, it's getting cold. Cool. But it sucks that the eco mode doesn't work. I always wanted a car with eco mode. Well, do you know how to use it? Uh, you stop, ah. and it says eco start stop system not available. So it has some sort of a fault what prevents it from using it. Curve light, whatever you call it. No coffee drinking on our channel. Eating a carrot is okay. I bought the vehicle, I negotiated what I could, and then there is the transmission issue, which is of course a big risk for us. Um, it, it could cost us also a new transmission, and I had to waive all the warranties in order to reach my negotiation target. There is no good buy without any risk, okay? If you don't want to take any risk, you got to pay the full price. And then we got a 2015 HSE Discovery 4, with 108,000 kilometers. That's pretty awesome, I think. I am here to register a new mall crawler. So, all set. And now Christian can book a train ticket to go up to Stolberg again and pick up his new to him mall crawler. Now, there is exactly one situation where I use a train, and that's when I pick up a new car. My first train was cancelled, and now I'm suddenly an hour and a half later. This is definitely not Japan. I think this whole organization is run by idiots. It will be the last time I rode a train for the next two years. So, the vehicle is mine, and I'm gonna go now on a 330 kilometer trip home with a buggy transmission. Let's hope the thing is gonna survive. So I'm in the mall crawler now. Talking to me. And it's much faster than yours. <laughs> it automatically adjusts the speed if you follow cars. I was just not paying attention and almost running over a Fiat 500 and it automatically brakes. 
So it does have the auto distance yeah, control. You works. just are too stupid to activate it. When we test drove it, I resetted a bunch of faults. Maybe one of them was it. Yeah. It's my arrival time here on this thing. Ankunftszeit. 2056 without brakes plus McDonald's. Yeah, I this is a feature only the newer mall crawlers have. So when I go here over in a lane without braking, watch that, I can take my foot away and the car will adjust speed. This is amazing. And now watch it, if I get out of this lane now, it automatically accelerates again. See, I got my feet off the pedal here. So, this is pretty sweet. On this road, you can see that the steering wheel isn't straight. After three hours of driving, something just happened. This warning light about the start-stop system went off and a warning triangle came on instead, okay? So looks like one got me bored, so it turns on the other one. So I'm home now and the first thing I did, of course, is do a reset adaptation values of the HP8. I didn't want to do that when I still had to do some Autobahn driving. And guess what? Here. See how it was always jerking when I decelerated? Now look at this. It's all smooth. It's beautiful and unbelievable at the same time. This car was at Land Rover before. It had a repair on the HP8 transmission because of an oil leak in the oil pan. And it was a lot of money. And those idiots put new oil in, I would suspect. And they didn't reset the adaptation values. And of course that makes the transmission jerk because that oil has then a different kind of, a, I don't know, lubrication properties, I call it. I cannot tell you how happy I am that this transmission doesn't need to come out. And that's where I negotiated the biggest part of the price down. So now I got all that money left to fix that rear bumper. There's the high beam assist. And now when I turn here, it lights up the entire side of the road. My last mall crawler didn't do that. So I could have hit a curbstone at the mall. But with this one, it's not possible because it got some side lights here. This is incredible. I love it. And of course, it got 600 Newton meters. And watch it when I unlock it. I just saw that. It puts like a little discovery on the ground here. Isn't that something? It's almost a Mercedes. It has a safety lock nut and the socket is missing. So Christian's going to have to make one. You know, if something is wrong, we blame Land Rover. Yeah. Unfortunately, no lock nut. So I'm making a casting of our security nut. Before I put the glue in, I used some WD-40. Hopefully this is gonna get out now. And there's my casting. So here I outsource my job to Robin. He's machining the nut. And the next step is that we weld these pieces back in and then machine down the pieces to match exactly what the lock nut looks like. Cool. Robin is putting a 24 millimeter hex head on this. So it's very simple. Vera outsourced her job to me and I outsourced my job to Robin. Wow, this fits good. That, that is his hot glue gun cast and it has those the indentations you need in order to manufacture the according socket. Now he's pissed because... I no, I don't have anything to do. <laughs> we already finished here. Oh my god, it's gonna be so good. Robin's doing such a good job. Oh, I'm so bored. This is Robin's work, okay? So we transferred the welding spots with our molding, what we made. Robin machined the inside to dimension. Cool. He outside to dimension and then he machined on this hex head in our index head, which I got from my 83-year-old dad when I was like 
20 years old. So Robin, now we're gonna try if it fits on the wheel nuts on the Discovery and see if it holds up the torque. Oh my God. It fits only in one position, okay? It's coded. Let me try it. I'm gonna do that because I don't wanna give Robin the responsibility. Look how perfect it fits. Cool. Okay, now let's hope it holds. Oh my God. Oh, oh please don't. Tight. Let's try another one first before we break it on the first one. Don't hurt yourself. Ah, ah. The first one has lost. Robin is just okay. such a good guy. All I hear is, oh, that will never come off that car ever again. Yeah. So we got three out, but the fourth one down there. Oh no. The, basically the keyway ripped off and it's stuck in there. So with this one, we got a huge problem. See, it turns, but the nut's not coming off. Oh it's dear like, God. It's like the nut ripped off Yeah. right here. Yeah, so your welt has to be longer. This one was the only debacle. Here you can see that our tool wasn't engaged completely and it gouged up this corner and then it ripped off this head. So the last bit, we knocked it in all the way and then we got it loose. So there was a lot of luck involved on this one, but I think overall, Robin, this was a really good job, I think. So this is our tool. This is our souvenir for you. Oh, what are you doing now? Are you drilling in your car? Yeah. Oh my God. Oh dear. We're gonna just put a bolt in here. Yeah. We'll fix everything. It's a great car. Look at that. That oil leak is from the new mall crawler. That oil leak is from the new mall crawler. That probably too. That one also. Everything can be blamed on the new mall crawler now. Look at what he got. He got new uh, rubber pads for our two post lift. That oil leak is also from the mall crawler. Oh my god. <laughs> the transfer case only has how much oil in it? I don't think it's the transfer case leaking. I think it's the automatic transmission still leaking. Because the transfer case I checked yesterday and the oil level was perfect. Yeah, no, it's not the automatic transmission because I checked that one and there was no leakage. You can see that with your x-ray vision, right? Yes, I can see that with my magic. I'll tell you guys a secret. No, don't. On all the mall crawlers, the rear license plate is mounted only with Velcro. So don't tell anyone because somebody's gonna steal our good license plate. Yes, if our license plate will be stolen, it's your fault. Yeah. This way, when you mount it with Velcro, okay, I show you, you got like a nice gap around it and it just looks prettier and you don't have any bolts. You don't have that ugly plastic frame, nothing. You just use Velcro. How it's done the correct way. It doesn't look ugly, it looks just nice. I'm gonna make an Ella Time sticker for that one. Do you see my new Land Rover Club sticker? You have to form a emergency lane in Germany on the Autobahn immediately if the traffic is building up. The, the two right lanes go fastest right and the left lane goes furthest left and then there is a big gap the emergency vehicle police and the tow truck can go through it's most important oh, christian's completely nuts look what he got package for the mall crawler so i bought a tiny spare part for my mall crawler oh my god <laughs> the rear bumper looks really really bad here are scratches and there is a cut a tear here and we don't want to have that let's see if it is the right color yeah i may have screwed up on the color and it's really oh my god it's really badly beaten up it's even worse it's than not ours. worse it has tiny scratches look what are you talking about well that one is shiny and that one's not well it's because i have to polish it oh my god So let's see where the oil leak is. Oh. There is gear oil. See right here? Yeah. It's oh losing. my God, it's dripping. It's even dripping. Yeah. Land Rover maintained. The last bill was 3,000 euros. 
because of an oil leak, including under body cleaning. And here, look what they did. 3,000 euros, problem not fixed. Yeah. Sorry if I keep hitting on these guys, but if they do such stupid work for so much money, yeah. they don't deserve it any better. How tight they make this at Land Rover. What are they afraid about? What the? That's it, that's my name. Look at that. Ooh, <laughs> you're breaking my car. <laughs> Good chips. Ooh. <gasps> no oil leak there. Uh, it's you all know, dry. You either have corrosion like on a Toyota or oil leaks like on a Land Rover. So yeah. this looks like a Toyota. Oh, it's got oil. I got it from all the way up there. You're not supposed to put anything all the way up there. <laughs> yeah. These are the bushings they changed. Yeah. They put new arms in. See here, this is also new. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. But that looks new. It looks I new wonder if well. it's OEM. <laughs> but it wasn't done by Land Rover because Land Rover would have replaced these bolts. So this is not bad. All we have to do here is a wheel alignment and new brakes. Look, they put in a new cross member. That's new. Read what you wrote down for me I now. I have front discs and pads, DAB plus radio and antenna. Good. CB radio and antenna. Oh my God. A winch. Oh my God. Centaurini black paint. And? Clear coat. Very well. And you need a rear wiper blade. And while we added front wiper blades. It's a start stop auxiliary battery. So you're right and I'm right. It says so here. Very well. Okay, set it down here before you hurt yourself. So the start-stop battery is in. So we're going to see what this one is doing. We got this little start-stop battery in here. The new one. So the new mall crawler is still dead. So there's the connector broken, I noticed. This oh usually, my God. Yeah, this usually happens when the workshop installs a new battery and they're not careful. Then they slam the battery against it, yeah, and then they break off this connector housing. So, and then of course it was nobody's fault. Yeah, yeah? especially not the Land Rover dealership. Half an hour later, I got this connector latched back in place and this is nice. Battery what came with the car, which is a Vata Silver Dynamic. After 20 years, this is now my last Vata battery. I will never ever in my life buy one again. And I tell you the reason, it's not technical. The reason is that they changed their procedure of marking these batteries with a manufacturing date every so and so often. And the latest is that they have a date code which can no longer be decoded to find out what the manufacturing date actually is. And that was in the EU, okay? And that was in a plant in Germany which produced this. This is an absolute no-go for me. Vata produces for Mercedes, they also stamp it in the pole. But when you buy it from them as a consumer, you have no chance after a few years when you sell your car to know exactly when that battery was produced. That is an absolute no-go. Last battery for me, it's also dead. So I assume according to that code what I found, it's a 2017. So that battery didn't even last five years versus the original Excite for my previous small crawler. I charged it, it seems to be okay and it's a 2013 and i know exactly when it's gonna get cold again it's gonna cause problems so i bought a new battery like i always did so far when i bought a new car or a mall crawler i always get unlucky on the batteries this is an excite not a vata because i'm done with vata <laughs> so changing the battery Robin is here, he can help you. I can help you. If another owner now gets this car and looks at this battery, he doesn't know when it was installed. And this is just terrible. This is the battery mafia. Yeah, it's in. Good. Fits. Okay. Perfect. So one done. He got Ridex. Sounds like a condom manufacturer <laughs> joined the Viber blade industry. Well, condom manufacturers know a lot about rubber. <laughs> I'm not going to make a video where to show how to change the Viber blades. 3 minutes 50. I'm going to make this click, click, click done in the video. <laughs> I got two new Viper blades. That's all I want. <laughs>
This is the broken fender of my new mall crawler. It's still got some scratches here and some here. But other than that, it just needs polishing. It had broken off mounts here. I just put a piece of aluminum bracket here in between and reattached them with some flathead screws here. And I can put this back in. I also attached new clips all the way around. And I got new ones here as well. So this should take care of it for basically a few dimes. Got the clips all in, all new. So this is back on there. I think it's pretty good. So guys, check this out now. Look, I stop and the car shuts off. Ignore that gas consumption down there, okay? I'm up here at 1800 feet and I was given the beans. That's what you get for it. When I lift off the brake, there we go again. Awesome, so this works. Yeah, this is some consumption, man. My Challenger would be all jealous. Look at what Robin built. How cool is that? It's for our doorbell. Ah, it looks so pretty. Good job. Mm -hmm. Huh? You're an artist. A blacksmith artist. There are still two screws missing. Christian's gonna get new ones. So that looks so nice. Hey, check this out. I got DAB Plus now here. I can listen to Radio Bob. And I got the antenna over here. Oh, I forgot to close this little lid there. So when you glue down this antenna for DAB Plus, stay away from the heated windshield, okay? Or it won't work. This is why it's so far down, okay? And then the Pure, what I got here, Pure 400, is wireless. See, there are no wires around here. And it's really cool because the wires, they go in here. They come down through the A-pillar and then they are connected in here. So all I had to do is drill this little hole back there. And then? See this hole? Yeah. And plug it in here and here. And now I got DAB plus, see right here? But how do you, did you get the cable from here to here? Well, I'm an electrician. I just ran it. So you took it all apart? I take out one piece. It's really easy. Oh, okay. when, when I do this on David's car, I'm going to film it. Ah, yeah. Okay. okay. This communicates wireless with this antenna. It's called Pure 400. It comes with a few other features I don't need. Does it also do Bluetooth? It does Bluetooth and you can even run your cell phone over it. I got no affiliation and I don't want to make too much commercial now for it. But it does the job, it's easy to stick in and it got no wires, that's the big thing. Ah, yeah. So that's it for the first video with our new mall crawler which we just got. And it's already dark now because we worked on it whole day. We went after that transmission leak, but that's not going to be in this video, trust me. It will be a few videos down the road. You're not going to believe what the root cause of that leak was. So I tell you, when that video comes around, check it out. Yes. I hope you liked this content. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Think about subscribing and in any case, don't unsubscribe. And we thank our patrons very much for their support. They make these videos possible. Every week. Yes. And we'll see you next Sunday. There you go. <laughs> Long day. <laughs>